Hi, welcome back. We're still trying to finish the last two skills, these, this one and this one, in our review. Again, if you're not too sure on these, there's more examples on the skill videos, which is not homework, but is extra. So if I look at a perpendicular equation, notice the word perpendicular is different. So I'm just gonna highlight that, a different color. So it's, I'm gonna have a different step in these. Most of the steps are gonna be the same, but it's gonna be different, the perpendicular part. Okay, so let's take a look. It says, if a line goes through this equation, pause and copy the problem down. So I'm gonna do 2y minus 4x equals seven. It looks like I can add 4x on both sides. All right. And then recopy the problem. 2y is equal to seven plus 4x. I still have y with a two. So I'm gonna divide every one by two and cancel as needed. So I notice that two divided by two is one and four divided by two would actually be two. And now I'm gonna rewrite the problem. So two divided by two, we just leave y, seven halves, and then I have four divided by two x would just be two x. Now I did all that because my first step is what's the slope? So I notice my slope is the number in front of the x, which is two. But notice this word perpendicular. That word means opposite reciprocal. So opposite reciprocal means that the perpendicular slope is really what I need. And so this is positive, so I need a negative. And I have to, that's what opposite means. One is positive, one's negative, or if this was negative, this needs to be positive. And reciprocal means flip upside down. So this, this is the slope I need, and this is the coordinate I need for my point slope form. Y minus Y1 slope, X minus X1. Now, I'm going to substitute in my slope and my point y minus my y coordinate, six, slope, x minus my x coordinate. Now all that's looking good, I don't have any double negatives, so I'm just gonna circle my answer, that's in point slope form. Now if they also ask me to continue and put it into slope intercept form, then I gotta keep going. I need to distribute and then clean it up as quickly as possible. So I get y minus six, negative one half x minus one times a negative, another negative one half. So a negative one times that would be just negative negative one, so it'd be plus y minus six, negative one half x plus one half. Now I still need to add six to both sides to get y by himself. So I get y is equal to negative one half x, and I have one half plus a six. Well, I need two in the denominator so that I can combine these two terms that are alike. Six could be rewritten 12 halves, because 12 divided by two is six. Now let's rewrite this for our final answer. Y is equal to negative one half x, plus 13 halves, awesome job. Okay, now let's try a perpendicular one where they don't give us the equation, but I still need slope, good practice. So I need this formula when I need the slope from the coordinates. So I get the y values, eight minus two, and I subtract the x values, three minus a negative two. Three plus two would be five. So here's my slope, but I, I can't get ahead of myself. Remember, I've got this word perpendicular, which means opposite reciprocal. So instead of the number six fifths, I need the perpendicular slope. So the perpendicular slope, if that number is positive, I need this to be negative and I'm gonna flip it upside down. This is the slope I need, and this is the point I need, and I'm gonna do point slope form. Let's do it. 
y minus my y coordinate to slope x minus my x coordinate, 6. Okay, now that's looking good. But if they want it in slope intercept form, I got to keep going. I've got to distribute here and rewrite y minus 2, negative 5, 6, x, negative 6 times negative 5 over 6. So y minus 2, negative 5, 6, x, a negative times a negative is a positive, so I get 30 over 6. I could have actually canceled that. Notice 30 over 6 is actually 5. So I'm going to rewrite this, negative 5 over 6x plus 5. Beautiful. Now I'm almost done. I'm just going to add 2 to both sides. I get my final answer. Yay. Okay. Now it's time to draw. So there's a lot of constructions. If you There's probably five or six. I'm just going to go over a couple. If you need to see more, check out skill eight. Now, this is very hard to do because I'm holding the phone, but I'm going to try my best. Uh, one of the ones we did in class was a line. And we really just, um, if we had a line, we could make a equilateral triangle. So I'll show you how to make that. And again, this will probably be a multiple choice question and you'll have to answer a question about one of the steps or what happened. Now if you're at home and you don't have your compass, you can actually use a paper clip um, or anything like that. And again, you just hold down one side. Sorry about the camera here. Hold down one side, so see I'm holding that down, and then you take your pen and you make an arc, and you can do the same for the other side, okay? So let me um, try to hold the phone here and the pen. Um, there we go, make an arc. Cool, right? So I used a paper clip as a compass, and I actually think I didn't make an equilateral triangle. What I've done here, forget that. That's not an equilateral triangle. I started the equilateral triangle. This is a perpendicular bisector. Let me show you. So I made, I had a compass, and it's this compass is a paper clip, so it's only going to give you a radius of the length of the paper clip. But if you make an arc from both ends and you're going to be creating an intersection of two arcs and I'm going to label this A, this B, that C, and that D. So my line segment AB, I made an arc from A, I made an arc from B, and my arcs intersected at C and D. If I take a straight edge and trace connecting the points, which is my usually my last step, if I connect the points, notice I've actually bisected my original line segment. I cut it in half. So it originally was six units long, and I've created a 90 degree angle at exactly the halfway point. Awesome. So this is how you construct a perpendicular bisector. Okay, now I'm going to try to not mess it up. I'm going to try to now do the equilateral triangle. Let's try. Now, I use the same compass. You know, you hold down your pen and use a second pen and make an arc. So keep that at the center. Don't do it without a second pen. I'm just doing it because I got to hold the camera. So make an arc, right? Make a dot where the arc crossed the line. So I'm going to get a different color so you can see I'm making a dart where the original crossed. And now I'm going to make an arc from the dot I made. So my original line, A, B, and I made an arc from A. So I'm going to call that C. Now I'm actually going to go back and um, make an arc from C. So I've only made an arc from A. 
I'm going to actually make an arc from C, so it's going to trace somewhere along there. So I want to use a different color so you can see. So trace a line from C, so it looks something like that, right? So I made an arc from C, and I made an arc from A, and there's the intersection of those points, okay? Made an arc from C, made an arc from A, and I'm going to call that D. Now, last step is to take a straight edge and just connect the points. Notice what I've made is an equilateral triangle. The reason it's equilateral is because every mark or arch that was made was the same distance long, which was the length of my paper clip, which I'm using as my compass. Thanks for joining us.